Hello and welcome to another Creative Coding video. Today we're going to be looking at functions but looking at a new way of using them. We're going to be looking at new powers that they have. Now just to recap on what we've done with functions before, we introduced them fairly recently and we saw them as a useful way of packaging up code that we wanted to use again and again, wrapping it up as a function, giving it a name, which had several benefits. One of them was that if we wanted to use that code several times, all we needed to do was call that code by the name of the function. So instead of copying and pasting the whole code, we just use the name of the function a few times. In fact, we've got a uh, some code here that I've already set up. I've called it my flower and you'll recognize it's pretty much the code that we've used in a previous video for drawing a flower. It draws a circle, a yellow circle, and then has smaller red circles above, below, to the left and to the right. And that arrangement looks like a flower. And we chose to draw that arrangement at a random place on the canvas and that's why we have x and y chosen at random x could be between 0 and 800 and y could be between 0 and 600 so the big circle is at x y and then you'll remember that we did a fair bit of work working out where the little red circles should be in relation to x, y, so the one that was just above the, the main circle was the same x, but y minus 50, so it's 50 units above. Let's run this code. You can see here in the main draw section, we're calling our function myflower. So let's run that. Yep, it's a, a pattern that looks like a flower. Now, that's something you'll recognize um, from previous videos. If we run it, it's drawn at a different position on the canvas, You're getting chopped off. <laughs> we know how to fix that. Great. Now, what if we wanted to draw our flower at a position that wasn't random, but at a position that we we had already chosen. So if we said we want to draw it in the middle, x is 400 and y is 300, that would work. We've done that before. Let's run that. Bang in the middle. Yep, that's what we expected. Now what if we wanted to draw another flower that was not in the middle, but further up. Well, we can't change the code like this. Let's say 200, 200. Let's draw two flowers. We can't change the code like this by changing the position inside the function, because what that means, as you can see, is both flowers, this one and this one, are drawn at 200, 200. Hmm, how can we get one drawn in the middle and one at 200, 200? Let's, let's picture that on our, on our canvas. We want one of the flowers to be at 400, 300, so we'll have a big circle and then smaller petals like that. And we want the other one to be here at 200, 200. So a big yellow middle and then red exteriors, red external petals. And we might even have another one. We might even say there's going to be one at, um, I don't know, 600, 200. And that will be there with a yellow centre and four red petals. Hmm. We can't change the X and Y because 
if we changed it to say 600 200 which was this one here then every time we called flower it'll just be drawn there there's three calls to flower and yet they're all drawn over the same place what we want is some way of telling our function where to draw the flower. See, we avoided this before because we were using the function to pick a random place. So if we drew the flower three times, it was drawn at a random place and very likely they weren't on top of each other. Hmm, so that's a puzzle. We need a way of passing to our function information about where we want it to be. Let's draw a picture of that idea. We have our function called my flower. We call my flower in our code, in our draw section. We somehow want to be able to pass information to it. We want to be able to say, draw it at this X and this Y, and then the drawing happens. And then we want to be able to do that again with different information, with a different X, Y, so it draws it again at a different position. Hmm. We can actually do that. And we've seen that happen already. Let's look at our very own code. Do you see this circle instruction that we've used lots and lots and lots of times? What have we got after it? We've got brackets and we've got some variables and numbers which are information that's passed to circle to tell it where to draw the circle and at what size. Wouldn't it be nice if we could somehow tell our my flower function where to draw the flower something like this so 200 200 and the other one was at 600 200 if this could work that would be nice wouldn't it we'd say call my flower and i'm passing it these coordinates call it again with these coordinates call it again with these coordinates the good news is this is possible but we need to change our function to expect that information and the way we do it is in the definition like this so when we specify something in the brackets when the function is defined it's telling our computer that this function called my flower expects two bits of information and they're going to be called X and Y. So this 400 is going to become X and we can use X however we like in our code and this 300 is going to be called Y inside the function and we can use that how we like. Now we could have chosen different, we could have called it A and B, for example, but then we would have to change all the X and Y's to A and B. We can choose what we like, but we should, we should name things to give us a clue about what they do. Let's try that. Ta-da! That worked. You can see that there are three flowers. This one is at 200, 200. This one is at 400, 300. This one is at 600, 200. So we've succeeded in passing information to our function. Then that function uses that information. That's great. That's actually quite a powerful thing to be able to do. Again, it reinforces this idea of writing code that's general, not specific, general, and can be used in 
many ways, perhaps ways we haven't foreseen when we wrote the code originally. And what this ability does is it allows us to pass information to a function so that it can be the same code, but the code does something slightly different every time based on that information. Let's try and add another RAM flower. Let's go back to our picture here. Maybe we'll do one here. So this is 400 and 500. So it should be there. So we're going to say my flower 400 500 and that information x and y that should be passed to our function and then inside that function that 400 and 500 will become x and y and it will draw those circles according to that x and y let's try it my flower 400 what was it again 400 500 500 cool that worked nice so just to finish off now and summarize what we've learned we've looked at functions again and we've looked at a new capability which is the ability to pass information to functions and that's quite powerful because it means those functions their behavior can change a little bit based on what information we pass them so now my flower takes information which is two numbers which are the position on the canvas the coordinates of where to draw the flower so depending on the information I pass it it will draw the flower at a different position fantastic have a play um, this is one of those things where the more we experiment and the more we <clears throat> have a go ourselves the more the idea sinks in and becomes familiar so just having seen this video probably isn't enough to fully get comfortable with this idea so have a go yourselves write a function that draws something maybe a face maybe a flower and um, you know you have a go yourselves at passing information to functions now I was going to finish there but I'm actually going to extend this video a little bit by extending the information we pass to this function so this is a bit of an extra bonus so if you want to take a break and stop and come back later this is the point to do it but if you're ready to carry on stay with us <laughs> now let's let's look at what we've drawn we've got we've got some flowers and they're being drawn where we want them to be now they're not random um, wouldn't it be nice if we could have petals that were different colors so instead of red why don't we pass information to our function which tells our function the color of the petals so let's work backwards from that so the yellow circle so the fill yellow is for the middle circle and fill red is for the four petals let's say we're not picking from a random list we're not choosing another color we're saying we're going to pass that let's call it c and we expect our my flower function now to be passed a third bit of information c color could have called it anything x y c makes sense could have called it my color like this could have done that but let's just keep it simple with C so Phil will choose color C for those four petals where does it get C from it's passed to my flower as a third bit of information so we need to do that 
we are already passing x and y and now we say let's say <clears throat> blue and for the other flower let's say purple and for this one let's say let's keep that one red and this one will say hmm green green petals <laughs> let's give that a go so what should happen now is calling my flower we're passing three bits of information x y and a color we've changed our my flower function to expect three color three bits of information x y and color we're using x y to position those circles and we're using this extra bit of information the color to choose for those petals let's see if that works we should expect a blue purple red and green flower yep that worked so you can see now even better illustrated this idea of passing information to a function so that it can act on it that's pretty cool I like that <laughs> that is pretty cool now if you want a real challenge and this might be a little bit difficult but if you can do it that's that's really really good see if you can pass another bit of information to your function which tells you the scale at which to draw the flower so if I passed it I don't know scale one it might draw the flower just like this but if I said scale 0.5 half it would shrink the flower in proportion that's that requires a little bit of pencil and paper working out it's possible but if you really want to challenge have a go otherwise what we've done so far is more than enough to understand the main idea of passing information to functions Whew, that was a lot of work today i'm sure we're exhausted take a break <laughs> see you next time bye